All right, up here at the north, a very strong Terran player. One a courage has his Brood War Pro Gaming license. He is. Epixel Munan. Formerly known as All About You in StarCraft II. His opponent, a pretty good Protoss player on the team Startail. Squirtle. Tried to squeeze that one out there. Squirtle is a very confident player. He's played in a lot of different tournaments in StarCraft he has. too. He's played all over the place and he's really shown a good level of confidence. I'm, I'm glad that you said that it's actually a really good way to sum up basically his personality. Is He's not overconfident, but he's like Nada. You know, he's not going to get nervous. Yep. He's just not. And he's a very mannered guy. He's always just... I always ask him how he's doing before matches, and he's just like, yep, I'm going to win. Oh, <laughs> Epic's close. He wants to close it out. Taking that little squirtle drawing there. Don't worry, though. I'm sure Moonen will take him out. We'll see about that. <laughs> I love our little caster biases yeah. here. Former Startail on Epic. I was formerly on Startail when I first came to Korea. Yeah, I actually uh, was in the clan Nex for a while, playing on the Korean server from the U.S. I was playing on the Korean server from Korea. Oh, well, you were cooler <laughs> than me. Now I'm, now I'm as cool as you. I guess we're the same now. So we did have a little uh, probe dance around the barracks. It's forcing the extra SEV to be off the mineral line. Uh, just a little bit of extra, less mining time from the Terran player. It gives the Protoss a slight advantage. Indeed it does. Now, probe just wants to be annoying here. It does see the gas. It's very, very important. It's always the most essential thing to see with your scouting probe. Because if you don't see gas, it obviously means your opponent's going to be going for a fast expand, which is very rare to see on this map. And back at home, of course, Squirtle has taken his first gas. Now, I'm kind of curious to see what he's going to do. The safest build to do on a map like this, in my opinion, where historically Terrans have done one base all-ins, is to actually go for a one-gate into Robo type of build, get that robotics up, and really use that Observer to scout. And only, uh, not only that, but if your opponent seems like he's going for a one-base timing attack, you need that robotics space sometimes to hold those. So it's very, very important. The watchtowers on this map are also quite important to hold. Uh, it does give you vision across the other route that you can get from base to base. Uh, if the Terran player goes siege tanks, you can really control a lot of the area that the uh, Protoss player can't control. Exactly, because when you have those tanks on top of the watchtower, you have tons of vision, and it's very difficult for the Protoss army to assault those tanks. They have to walk around the ramps. They're taking so much fire during that time. And there goes the factory for Moonen. Meanwhile, Squirtle has taken a second gas, and it looks like he is going to be going for a one-gate Robo-type build, given that he's not at any gateways, just making a stalker right now. Continuing to scout around with his probe, though, trying to make sure his opponent isn't trying to hide any Sort of tech, maybe hiding some banshees. Always good to do that with one of your probes. And a reactor going down for the Terran players. Most likely going to be trying to get out a few extra marines here, uh, just to bolster up that army that he really needs to be able to fight any sort of uh, gateway units of the Protoss player. But and we do have a Stargate. Yeah, it's going to be a Stargate. Now, this is interesting. It's a little bit late to be getting a Stargate. I think he probably could have gotten that just a little bit faster. He was going for this type of build. That's why I was thinking maybe it was going to be a Robo. But even so, he is going to, of course, catch that SCV scout off guard. But most likely, he's going to make Phoenixes out of this. He can do some sort of Void Ray type of all in, which we've seen players do on this map in the past. But I think it's going to be a Phoenix opening to try to control the map. We may see just one Void Ray. Okay, so he's going to add two gates. So this actually could be an all in. At the very least, if you get a Void Ray, it gives you vision of the high ground. But it's very unusual to see Void Rays in this type of scenario where your opponent's already gotten gas and also he is got no real wall if he doesn't have barracks at the, top, at the top of his ramp because you can use that to charge up. If you know your opponent is attacking, it's a little weird when you do this because you don't have a robo. What if he goes cloak banshees? What if he gets that one viking out and it kind of shuts down your strategy? So it is a little bit difficult to do this type of build in this scenario, but that makes it unpredictable at the same time. That is very true. We do have a void ray coming out here from Squirtle. In, uh, and then from the Terran player, we also have a banshee coming out, but with no cloak. Uh, however, he is saving up gas, so we might see a cloak coming out very, very soon. And if he does, then he does have an advantage because there is less detection from the Protoss player. That's true. And I was just going to mention the probe did come up and saw the bunker that's being constructed right now. So there is going to be a bunker there. That does make it relatively easier to defend. Because with the bunker, the Void Ray and the Marines actually have the same range. Because for those of you guys who didn't know, I actually find a lot of people don't know this. If you put a Marine in bunker, it gets one extra range. So a little tip out there for the nubs. Same thing for Ghosts or Marauders as yep. well. Any infantry put in the bunker gets an additional range. SCVs can uh, range repair then too. No, not quite. <laughs> not quite, Trevor. Don't give nubs the wrong idea. All right, this Banshee relatively vulnerable right now. He's going to try to target down some of these stalkers. Oh. oh my god, that is huge. 
taking out that bench is going to completely kill the mobility of the Terran army. It's, he's going to have to fight around this bunker, and that's about all he can do right now. Just try to zone out a little bit, but he does lose a Marine in pushing that uh, that Void Ray back a little bit. Loses another Marine. Yeah, Marines falling like flies here. The bunker taking some serious hits, but so is the Void Ray. It looks like that Supply Depot will fall no matter what, but there is a Siege Tank out. Another Banshee is on the way to help out as well, and it's really difficult right now for Squirtle to come up the ramp. Even if he takes out the Depot and takes out some of these SCVs, it's very difficult for him to actually break up the ramp, especially with that Siege Tank out there as well. But it's Squirtle, a very uh, stable player, he does know that he doesn't need to run up the ramp. He just needs to hold the, pro uh, the Terran player in for a little bit, uh, try to get in a few more reinforcements, keep the Banshee's, uh, Banshee count down, and he should be able to do whatever he needs otherwise. Yeah, and actually, Moonin was supply blocked and choked there for a second, didn't even make another supply depot on time. Now he's in rough shape, and now there are enough units to break up the ramp. Moonin is in trouble, the bunker falls, there are two charged up Void Rays killing his units, and this could be the end for FXO here today. In this Team League match, the, the Stalker taking out that does go tank, down. And the SCBs fall very quickly to those Zealots, and I think this unfortunately may be the end when you have Zealots, Stalkers, and Void Race camping your production facilities, it's almost impossible to do anything about it. And the Viking does come out, is going to try to deal with that Void Ray. And the Manor Nexus by Startail <laughs> Squirtle to counter what Oz did earlier. And GG! Wow, that was a very good effort from FXO today. Indeed, it was. Startail played well. And. It was a pretty close day of matches, I have to say. I don't think people expected FXO to do as well as they did. But for a very respectable score. And, and remember, guys, this is just the first time FXO has played. And a lot of our players haven't been here for very long. So... I think Startail also recognized that a little bit, that the nerves from uh, FXO might be a little high. They did send out Squirtle for the last player. Uh, and he is known for putting on a little bit of uh, early pressure, which he did in the PvP against Oz, and then he just did in a PvT against uh, Moonin. So... Very true. Well, I gotta say that build order was pretty good. It's not an uncommon build to see. And uh, I think we may have miscounted Torch. Did we miscount? How many players on Epic so lost? I don't know. It's an American team, so too many. <laughs> And by American, I mean non-Korean. Don't count them out yet, there. guys. You guys are like, oh, FXO lost. No, we're totally tricking you guys. They're actually still in this, man. They've got another player coming out. Who's it going to be? I won't tell you guys. It's a secret. <laughs> you guys Except to you. You guys just, uh, I know you actually probably all the internet was like, Wolf is so stupid. <laughs> he doesn't even know how to count. No. I can't count. Well, right. it's okay. I use calculators for everything. Yeah, well, it's all right. I mean, you can't use a calculator to actually, like, count numbers can you how do you do that you just add the one there's like a tally plus, plus one every ti89 yeah. you just press a little tally and it just like makes a little line and you press it and after the fifth one it does a little slash mark my smartphone does everything for me because i check everything out at m.gumtv.net where it's all nicely laid out and counts for me so yeah. i don't have to do it anymore so it's doesn't it's not a trick it's not a trap mm. that part well. of my brain has disappeared well maybe i, I was so good at that fake it tricked you out there torch Ooh. just like squirtle tricked out uh, all the fxo players all right, well, that game, um, a lot of that game came down to the supply block of Moonin. Didn't have yep. any more units, and that was the reason why he decided once uh, Squirrel realized I can just break up the ramp, he just did. Also, taking out that uh, Banshee early on was huge. I don't know how those Stalkers actually did get that range in there. It is 4-2. <laughs> You're confusing me. <laughs> Wow. All right, so we, we do have so confused a 4-2 right from FXO, like I did think. <laughs> <sighs> You're almost as big of a troll as John. I know. Okay, so I was told not to uh, plug John's Twitter, but you guys should go message him at Junka, J-U-N-K-K-83. Tweet at him constantly. He loves it, although he says he hates it. I'll tell you guys what happened, basically. Um, we thought that, I mean, like, the game was over, and I was like, yeah, FXO lost, and then we didn't have, like, a ceremony or anything like that for them, so there wasn't, like, a big, oh, you know, a star tail wins, and I think Torch got a little confused, and I was like, yeah, dude, we got another player, and, like, I look at the screen, and we <laughs> loaded up the map for the next matches, yeah. I was like, hey, I am versus Foyu, and Torch just got so confused, just destroyed you, tore you down to the ground. All right, so we're going to have an interview here with the star tail coach, most likely. Just a minute.
We'll have that translated for you guys. Congratulations. Well, they're firstly players that uh, played in GSTL. So he said the players performed better than he expected, so he feels happy about it. And he, of course, used players that played in the GSTL before. Uh, that FXO uh, how do you feel GSL Kane League What's your motive for this season? I don't think I'm going to win a good season, but I want to win the GSL and win the GSL. I got knocked out really early in the GSL, but I wanted to do a good job in the GSL. I like his chance, his opportunity, since he lost the first game. We did well today and we're going to practice well and do well in our future matches as well. It's very good words from Startel. They were a little overconfident coming into this match, but it proved to be just confident enough. It did end 4-2. Very good respectable showing from FXO. But uh, I do expect a bit more from Startel in the future. Hopefully a few 4 uh, O's coming down these yeah, next few um, weeks. Yeah, especially after the coach interview earlier where he said the other teams would have been a breeze. And, you know, that last game, I mean, it, it ended up working out for him, but that kind of build can work very poorly in certain yep. situations, that, like Cloak Banshees, for example. If Moonen hadn't lost that one Banshee, things would have been very different. I don't know if you guys remember when Keen moved up to Kodas. I believe he was a player. He played against a Protoss, and there was a similar all-in. He had one Banshee, and he kept repairing it and just barely held it off. And it's that one Banshee, Banshee does so much damage, it can fly, it's very mobile, yes. and that one unit could have really, really helped him hold that. But these things do happen, today. and sometimes Torch gets trolled so hard, he can't even think straight, which he's just do. literally laughing. <laughs> um, but all right. That is the end of our first, first match. match. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Uh, but we do have another match coming up in a few moments here. It is going to be Incredible Miracle versus Foyu for our Utopia. Yep. Uh, it will be a 10 minute break, so go get a drink, come back, get ready for some more GSTL action. Alright, see you guys in 10!